It's Tuesday. Welcome to Politics Tonight, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I am Ola Jumoke Olatsunji. Police arrest suspected foreign nationals sponsoring protests with Russian flag in some parts of the country. Tonight, our focus is on the protest and national sovereignty. And I'll be speaking with Honorable Bashir Medugu, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Legal and Compliance. But first, let's bring you uh, this development from Adamawa State. The lawmaker representing Adamawa Northern Senator District, Senator Amos Johanna, has empowered about 140 youths who were trained on various cues. Senior reporter Wula Biadenusi found in this report. This set of graduates have undergone training on various skills including saloon, ICT and tailoring. These beneficiaries are from the five local government areas that made up the northern senatorial districts of Adamawa State. The training is in collaboration with the National Productivity Centre, which aimed at taking the unemployed youth out of the street. They are to keep those things and learn more, continue to uh, uh, attend more skills on how to use those tools and to also to continue to train others so that they will expand because that's the only way to be self-reliant. Apart from that, the lawmaker has distributed fertilizers to the farming communities in his constituency. We, we started by first and foremost to give them the farm inputs that will in, improve on the yields in the, on, on the farms. Um, these places where we are farming, they've been there for hundreds of years and they are being degraded. So we have to go to modern way of farming. Some of the beneficiaries share their experiences with TVC News on how the new skill learned will help them. The inception and with the organizing of this program, we have learned traits that we can help our community, our immediate community. We can also train people based on the training given to us. Learn something and to be independent of ourselves, especially we. This program is to help us in different aspects of our life, in terms of skills that we are acquire here. We are happy with the program, and I want you to continue uh, on this note. At the end, a boho was commissioned in Michaka, as that of School of Health will be done in the coming days. Let's take a short break and when we return, I will be speaking with Honorable Bashir Meidugo, is a senior special assistant to the president on legal and compliance. Welcome back, everyone. It is day six of the hashtag nationwide protest. And on Monday, the National Security Council warned promoters of ongoing protest against hoisting of foreign flags, describing the act as a treasonable offense. The council, which met in Abuja on Monday to review the ongoing nationwide protest, said perpetrators of the act will be prosecuted, adding that it will not allow any push for change of government. But let's remind you that the hashtag nationwide protest took a new twist in Kano State on Monday, as protesters were seen clutching and holding up banners bearing the Russian flag. The protesters, made up of mainly underage boys, were seen chanting songs in Hausa and running through the streets in protest. Also, the Russian embassy has distanced itself from protests in Kano and Kaduna State, emphasizing non-interference and respect for Nigeria's democracy. For more insight on this development, let's speak with Honorable Bashir Meidugu, who is a senior special assistant to the president on legal and compliance. <coughs> Excuse me. Honorable, good evening to you, sir. Thank you so much for joining us on Politics Tonight. Yeah, good evening, uh, Olaju Moke. Okay. And thank right, you so for this, having uh, me. Welcome. Uh, so this hashtag nationwide protest has you know, brought about some conversations begging for answers, uh, especially questions about the disappointing scenes coming from the northern part of the country. But we've heard uh, the chief of defense staff, uh, General Christopher Musa, uh, who has said foreign flags has been flown within Nigeria's sovereignty. But this latest development of Russian flag uh, displayed is unacceptable. Uh, what does this new development mean to you? Honestly, it's disgusting. It's uh, very, very uncalled for and completely unpatriotic for any Nigerian to hoist foreign flag within Nigerian soil. The law abhors this, and it is something that I think shall sadden everybody. And I think these people that for that are uh, you know doing this kind of heinous activities 
uh, doing it in the name of protests, but this is beyond protest. This is a violation of our, our laws. You know, no one has the right to hoist any foreign flag within this country, uh, within the shores of this country. It's like, you know, uh, you know, hoisting a flag, except in a friendly manner, you know, during demonstration. I don't think it is uh, something that the government should come down. It's, um, this is beyond protest, but a major concern for a lot of persons is the fact that the protesters that were seen flying this Russian flag are kids, they are underage boys. What do you think they were trying to achieve? Or do you even know, uh, I mean, do they even know the meaning of what they were doing? Exactly, that's the issue. I don't think they know the meaning of what they are doing. Mostly they are underaged, perhaps they are not really... Uh, educated, so definitely they may not be doing, they may not be knowing exactly what is happening, uh, you know, with respect to their acts, very, very terrible acts. You know, the Nigerian military will right, rightfully be annoyed with this, and uh, the government shall really look into it. And I think there should be civil, civic education uh, across Nigerian schools with respect to, uh, you know, um, uh, patriotism and uh, nationalism and so on, we should encourage civic education so that our kids will grow up with that knowledge. Because what they are doing uh, borders on, uh, you know, uh, criminality. It's, mm -hmm. it's actually treasonable to hoist a foreign flag on Nigerian soil. And uh, I think the kids, as you have rightly said, may not exactly know what they are doing. That's the truth. They may not know the impact, I mean, the implication of their actions. And uh, I think uh, as parents, we should be able to, you know, educate our children about nationality and patriotism, you know, in this country. You know, Honorable, you know, days before that protest began, uh, days before the first day of that protest, there were insinuations that it appears like uh, the North is driving this protest. And many were very convinced that uh, this is an anti tunubu protest because... If it's really about, uh, if it's really against bad governors, we should have seen the same uh, in the last administration. For you, is this a fact going by all that has happened in the last few days? Uh, sincerely, I, it's unfortunate that uh, um, people's grievances are being exploited by, uh, you know, politicians and uh, criminals. As you know, uh, it's unfortunate that the history of protests in Nigeria has always resulted in this kind of looting and, uh, you know, vandalism, uh, as we have seen in the past week. And um, it is best that Nigerians, especially leaders, you know, even in the opposition and, uh, you know, some other, you know, uh, leaders should be able to, you know, uh, prevail on their people to, to ensure that protests are not really, you know, carried out like that. Because we, we know that the history of protests, you know, uh, indicates that there is always destruction. And these destructions, uh, you know, are mostly, you know, private properties, government properties, you know, and so on. And the government spends a lot of money, you know, building all these things. And private people in these difficult times, you know, will have to find themselves struggling again to rebuild their lives after all this. And there were so many instances of people, you know, struggling to rebuild their lives. I mean, uh, uh, lamenting, you know, as a result of this, uh, this wanton destruction. So that is how, uh, I mean, uh, we, should, we, should, we should look at it. Also, you know, I mean, why does it appear like uh, northern elites, especially the governors, are silent? after days of massive looting and destruction of private and public properties. I mean, you look at states like Zamfara, uh, Plateau State, Kaduna, Kano, there is this deafening silence in reference to uh, this massive destruction going on in those states, which some have called political insurrection. Also, now that kids have now been yeah. turned to pray to fly a foreign flag in Nigeria, what does the silence mean to you? And would you say this justifies... Uh, federal government's position against the protest I'll be issue. Yeah, it is disheartening. You see, the responsibility of peace, security, and the welfare of the people does not only lie on the federal government, it also lies on the state. And you see, we have 36 states and the federal capital territory with 774 local governments. And 
It is the responsibility of each of these tiers of government to ensure peace, you know, and, uh, and, and uh, security. You know, it's not only the federal government. And the governors, in fact, the governors, it's really amazing that it's, it's, it's unfortunate that most of the governors are silent on this. You know, aside from those who have imposed curfews in their states and those who have, you know, done one act or the other to contain this kind of destruction and uh, riot that we have seen. Uh, governors should be able to come out proactively and even prevent these kind of things even before it starts. You know, so I really, so you know, don't know do the reason why. Honorable, why do you think this is not happening? Well, the, the, the issue is cannot be unconnected with, uh, I think, maybe dissatisfaction uh, with them, or maybe, I don't know, one cannot say their mind, you know, it's up to them, but definitely they should have done better. Honestly, mm. they should have done better. I am really, I'm not really, really happy that the governors decided to keep mute, you know, while all these things are happening in their states. You know, uh, the most, uh, uh, the saddest thing is that the destruction is within the state, and uh, it is on uh, some of those things that they have actually spent money to build. And some, some are, uh, like for instance, the, uh, the NCC building in Kano. Government spent billions of naira to build and equip that place with the aim of actually training, you know, the, the youth uh, to better their lives in different skills. So I do not see the reason why governors and other political leaders, not only governors, other political leaders, you know, keeping quiet when this destruction is going on. I think uh, it's something that I think we, think we need to address within ourselves. This is a, also, this is a, misery, a mystery. Yeah. Mm. Also, I'm I mean, listening. this also brings to question uh, the role of Northern stakeholders, uh, apart from governors, apart from political leaders, the role of Northern stakeholders in all of this. But again, does this speak to, I mean, perhaps the division and disparity in ideology within the political class in the North? Well, I don't think so. I don't think so. What I think, I think, uh, you see, the president, the programs of this, of this government is, you know, is such that it is aimed at rebumping the Nigerian economy to, you know, reclaim our position uh, in the world as an economic power and uh, to, to improve, you know, the lives of the people. However, you see, the, the way this government finds itself on assumption of office requires that a lot of hard decisions will have to be taken. Some of these have already been enumerated by the president in his speech. And we really have to be patient and supportive of government uh, with respect to the decisions that have already been taken. And uh, at the end, the aim of government is to provide you know, uh, economic freedom and development in this country and it is a very hard road we took and we have to do it there is no any other alternative so in that light i think our people should understand including politicians you know our academic our everybody should understand including public servants everybody should understand that this this government means good you know to us you know we have to really relaunch ourselves uh, towards relevance in this part of the world and um, it is not something that is easy to attain. We really have to cooperate with government to attain that. Right. I mean, so before we get to uh, some of the key takeaways from the president's address on Sunday, I'd like to bring up one of your uh, many tweets. You have once tweeted, it takes years to build, yet it's so fragile, it takes just a minute to destroy. I I'm just wondering, how much Correct. of these conversations do northern stakeholders like you spread within the rural and urban communities in the north? Exactly. You see, it takes years to build anything, to, to, to build trust, to build infrastructure, and to develop a country, it takes time and resources and energy, efforts, planning. But to destroy trust, infrastructure, takes minutes. And if we think this, I think we should be able to come to terms with reality that we have to trade with caution whenever we are expressing our grievances. You know, and we have to really tell our people that uh, we really have to economize our time, economize our resources, and plan ahead and very well 
to in order in order to achieve development. So in that light, I think it takes we should uh, that should actually be the you know uh, the the uh, the uh, the message to our youth. Look, you can't destroy what you cannot build, and it takes years to build. It takes years to build trust, infrastructure, and everything. So therefore, don't destroy. What what has happened, for instance, uh, in addition to the destruction? What about the resources? How do you get back to build? You Absolutely. see, it takes a lot of efforts to get back to build. So therefore, th there is no point. People should even shun away from protest. Instead, as the president has really uh, come out to say in his speech, dialogue is the best approach. Government should, you know, be approached for dialogue. Whenever there is a grievance, there is mis uh, uh, disagreement with government policies or misunderstanding of government policies, you know, we should be able to, you know, dialogue with government. And uh, that channel is open. Well, that's right. the issue. I, think, I mean, it's more worrisome because let me take you back to April when Mr. President still read out uh, the Riot Act to those threatening the nation's sovereignty. Uh, that was with the Yoruba agitators who stormed Oyo State uh, Government House. I remember the president saying the characters would definitely face the consequences of their actions. In April, there was also the call for military rule from some quarters. What do you consider as the significant repercussion of these agitations on our sovereignty as a nation? This outright treason is not attempt, it's, it's treason. Anybody that, has, that says that, I don't know, are they aware of the efforts made by all our leaders, our forefathers, uh, uh, to attain democracy over the years? Is it, is it easy to, 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 to attain our democracy, the freedom that we have? It took a lot of effort, sacrifice, you know, uh, you know to, to attain this democracy we have. And we are, as we are, the envy of sub-nations. Look at it. Since 1960, uh, how many military regimes do we have? And how, what, what has it led to? So the point is, our unity, progress, prosperity, and development lies on democracy. And anybody that is thinking otherwise, I think, shall be made to think correctly. And uh, people who are calling for military, uh, this thing shall be sanctioned. I think anybody that, that, that has said that should be, should be punished, because the law is very clear on this. It's treason. And uh, treason is, is, has a heavy price. You know, the punishment for treason, everybody knows the punishment for treason. You don't talk about it. You don't even think about it. And the moment you say it uh, with uh, two or three other people, it becomes conspiracy. So that will be added to the offense of treason itself. Conspiracy and treason. Conspiracy to commit treason and treason itself. Each one of them carries different sentences. Hmm. All right. I'm also wondering, what is the role of the national orientation agencies, uh, CSOs, in making sure that uh, these uh, messages get to the rural communities in, 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 in rural communities in general? Uh, I think uh, this is something, this is a new, I think, new, new, new challenge for the government. I think government should look into the uh, the prospect of engaging these civil so civil societies and uh, associations and uh, other organizations that have you know membership spread across the nation so that government can engage them you know on a regular basis on the need to actually protect our democracy on the need to uh, inform our people about the activities of government the National Orientation Agency has a great role in that regard. I think uh, the government should look into that. And this, I think, will be done. Because, you see, engagement of people, engagement of Nigerians towards, um, you know, uh, good governance. You know, government is doing this, government is doing that. And it is for our own good and for our own, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, uh, good government. So, therefore... I think government should be able to engage, you know, all those associations, civil society organizations, professional associations, you know, uh, and other units, you know, in order to, at all levels, not only at the federal level, but at state level, at local government level, we should have workshops, stakeholders engagement, retreats, 
you know, so that our people, you know, will understand that government is working for them, and the government is truly working for them. And if you look at the programs of this government, it's all is pro uh, prosperity. So we should be able to uh, understand that. Mm. All right. You, you, the president is asking for collaboration with citizens to in rebuilding the nation. What message do you have for Nigerians as we continue to trust that government uh, initiatives, government policies will, will work for us? Yeah, that is the truth. Because, you see, the citizens, all of us, citizens and residents in Nigeria, shall collaborate with government, shall you know, uh, understand that government is working for them, for everybody. We pay our taxes, we should obey traffic uh, lights, we should, obey, we should do the needful, and we should understand that government policies are aimed at improving our lives. And in that life, we should also have responsibility towards our families, our friends, the society, so that uh, the government can succeed. You know, it is not, not only the federal government, including the state governments, and, the, and even the local governments, because local governments are now empowered as a result of the Supreme Court judgment. So in that, that the federal government, you know, as the anchor, will be able to, you know, uh, support them, support everybody. Uh, the citizens will have to cooperate with the government and support the government, do the needful, you know, and uh, as you see, when Buhari administration started in 2015, they started with the mantra, change begins with me. Honestly, if we are to really successfully and, uh, uh, you know, uh, positively change, I think it would be good for this country. We would be able to uh, achieve what we are supposed to achieve. Government, you see, it is not, it doesn't make sense to love other countries, to go, for Nigerians to go to other countries to see that uh, people in other countries are, for instance, you know, obeying their traffic lights, paying their taxes regularly, even through self-assessment, and uh, doing the, uh, this and that, you know, according to how the laws of those countries are doing. Meanwhile, if you come to Nigeria, you become lawless. It's not possible. Stay on the queue. Follow the queue. You know, when it comes, you know, uh, to do, doing the needful, do the needful. If you are not enjoying to do, just, you know, do, uh, just keep, right. keep, keep to your lane. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. All right, Honorable. So, for how long should, uh, or how long should Nigerians wait for President Tinubu to see the positive impact of of his government as it saddles the affairs of of moving Nigeria forward? Uh, we are on course. We are on course already. The president has enumerated, you know, what has already been, you know, done and the results obtained in his speech. And what is in the five line, including the credit scheme, the student loan scheme, the job opportunities, uh, micro and small and medium enterprises uh, for our you know, uh, traders, and, and so on. There are so many programs that are coming up. Some have already you know, seen results, and the results will come. We are only one year in the government, so the country will experience economic boom at the end of uh, maybe uh, in two, three years' time. By the time... Uh, we achieve economic prosperity. I think uh, the opposition and others that are, you know, skeptical will come out and uh, commend the government. But meanwhile, I think everybody shall support, support the government to achieve the objectives it is, the, uh, the, uh, it has designed to, to achieve. The policies of the renewed hope administration. I think we should be able to uh, support it and then uh, wait for the results and cooperate fully with the federal government to ensure that. Uh, 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 we succeed. All right. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I've been speaking with Honorable Bashiru Meidugo, as a studio special assistant to the president on legal and compliance. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. And I look forward to more conversations with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching, everyone. Marks the end of today's episode of Politics Tonight. But you can watch the repeat broadcast of this episode at midnight. Get in touch with us on our social media handles, Facebook, Instagram, and X, at TVC News NG and at Olajumoke WO. He's in the hashtag Politics Tonight. We're also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. I am Olajumoke Olatunji. Good night, everyone.